Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool, and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. If you haven't been looking at PoE in the last few years, I encourage you to jump on board and let's take a deep dive into PoE. It's a technology that a lot of designers and application engineers are looking at for the first time because it's able to deliver up to 70 watts to a power device. So let's jump on board and take a look at PoE. So what is PoE? Well, it's it describes several standards. It also describes some ad hoc systems, but Basically, it's electrical power along with data on a twisted pair Ethernet cable. So that's what PoE is. But keep in mind, the term PoE can be broad, but it does describe several standards. In terms of electrical power, PoE injects about 54 volts on twisted pair. The first set of standards, the 802.3AF and AT, uses four wires and it can deliver up to about 30 watts. The 802.3BT has a couple variations of that, but that's all eight wires and that can deliver above 30 watts. Now the first standard, 802.3AF, came out with about 15 watts, but it didn't take long till there was a, a demand for more and then came out the standard 802.3AT and that's PoE and PoE Plus. Those use four wires and up to 30 watts of power. Quickly became a demand for more power, especially on access points. And so universal power over ethernet standard, the 802.bt standard came out and it has a couple variations, but right now it's up to about 90 watts, 45 watts on four wires, 45 watts on the other four wires. Now that's all theoretical. In reality, you only get about 71 watts to a device. Let's dive into some of the terminology. One is PSE or power source equipment. That's typically your switch that's got power that delivers to some device at the other end of the cable. And then there's PD, and that's the device that receives that power. So you'll often see those terms, PSE and PD. Let's take a look at these standards. 802.3AF is the original first standard between 3.8 and 13 watts. Look at the efficiency, about 84% efficient. Then we'll go to 802.3AT, which was the next demand for more power, 25 watts to 40 watts, about 88% efficient. Now watch as we go to higher power standards. 802.3BT type 3, 40 to 51 watts. We're going down. 85% efficient. 802.3BT type 4, 62 to about 72 watts, 79%. So notice at the 40 watt, 30 watt standard, we're getting the most efficient delivery of power. Now what's happening? We're losing more and more power across the twisted pair cable. As you're moving to higher standards of PoE, delivering more and more power through your twisted pair cable, you're going to have to look at better quality cable, maybe at the minimum CAT6, CAT6A, and you're going to have to look at the gauge of wire, 26 gauge at the minimum to deliver higher currents, better efficiency to the power device. As you're buying switches that have PoE, make sure you look at the specifications for that switch before you buy it and then you find it's underpowered. Keep in mind you do not have to buy a PoE switch for every switch in your enterprise. You're primarily using your PoE switches that are connected to devices that need power. The rest of your switches can be regular. They don't have to have PoE capability. But those switches that are connecting to devices, especially those that need power, need to be PoE. So who needs PoE? Well you'll be very surprised. Cameras, most of you are familiar. Access points, you all know. Networks switches, industrial controls, smart clocks, security access controls, IoT is exploding, router, VoIP devices, which we all know, LED lighting, thin clients, point of sale kiosks, digital signage and sensors. There's a lot going on with PoE. This is a great chart on PoE standards. You can see the years they were implemented or published and the power outage. But be sure to take a look at the comment section because that's very interesting. A lot of time published PoE power wattage standards don't tell you the truth about what can actually be delivered. So look at that column on comments. Now here's an injector that is able to supply up to 95 watts of power. And look at it, it supports one gig, 2.5, and five gig. Pretty awesome. 